been described as baseball's Peter Pan ballpark. It'll never grow up. It'll never grow old. And today, a lot of Cardinal fans have descended for Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Gillette Fusion ProGlide. St. Louis seven and a half games out in the NL Central. And today, a chance to gain some ground at the hallowed ground of Wrigley Field. Welcome to Fox Saturday Baseball. I'm Josh Lewin, and today, as always, when it's the Cubs and the Cardinals, it's a carnival. Yesterday, a little bit more circus, actually, than carnival. Going to bring in Mark Grace and talk about how they distracted us all from the Carlos Zambrano shenanigans. They did it by firing the general manager. Yeah, and in a ballpark that never grows old, well, losing baseball games has grown old. And because of that, Cubs general manager Jim Hendry is now looking for work, and the Cubs are still searching for answers. In the other dugout, the St. Louis Cardinals are looking up, up at the uh, Milwaukee Brewers, and they need to get some kind of hot or they're going to continue to look up at him. Yeah, the Brewers don't seem to be in the mood to lose. The Cardinals let one get away yesterday. And they've got a chance to bounce back this afternoon. It's a wonderful rivalry at a wonderful ballpark on a beautiful summer day. You got the Cubs. You got the Cardinals. Head to head coming up next right here on Fox. Morning. You'd never know it. It is gorgeous right now. 80 degrees and we are playing ball here at Wrigley. It is a perfect day for baseball and a perfect day for these Cub fans to come on out and have a beautiful Saturday afternoon. No dull moments here in Chicago when it comes to baseball. This weekend for your consideration, the dismissal of Cubs GM Jim Hendry with a career record of one game over 500 in a nine-year body of work. And this franchise, Gracie, known for a Billy Goat yesterday, I guess kind of made it more about a scapegoat. Jim Hendry out after nine years, and he talked to the media emotionally after all that. Obviously been very, very fortunate to, uh, you know, be with the people I've been with. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm not going to leave here with any problems. Uh, Tom Rick is a good man. Um, we just didn't win enough ball games. That's that's the bottom line. 
And amazingly, the dismissal was actually four weeks ago. Hendry and the Cubs kept it a secret. He just kept on working, signing draft picks and contemplating trades. It's like his wife told him to, to get out, but he still hung around for a month to take out the laundry and stuff. And he's a good man. Very, very weird. Here's the Cardinals starting lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. John Jay leads it off. Alan Craig is next, and then Pujols. We'll talk a lot about Albert Pujols today. Days off for both Matt Holliday and Rafael for call. Tony La Russa explaining that as they both just kind of needed a mental day. They're both available to pinch hit if necessary. Freeze and Schumacher, Molina, the former Cub, Ryan Terrio, and Edwin Jackson, the former White Sox, against the former Tampa Bay Ray, Matt Garza, on the mound for the Chicago Cubs this afternoon. The opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And we'll grab a look at Matt Garza, the guy that threw a no-hitter last year. Then again, so did his opponent last year. Edwin Jackson did the same thing. Here's Garza. Yeah, it it's, doesn't make a whole lot of sense with Matt Garza that he's he's sitting on five wins, five and nine on the season. Here we are in mid-August already. That's just not very many decisions. He's had a lot of tough luck. And, Well, here's the uh, sprint pitcher profile. Here's Matt Garza. Well, at 9.2 strikeouts per nine innings. He's obviously a strikeout pitcher, but I was just telling you about the hard luck. Gets a lot of no decisions, either because of lack of run support. Uh-oh. Hang on. Uh-oh. What's going on here, Josh? Well, this isn't the only game in town today. Gracie, you've been in Chicago long <laughs> enough. You know about the Aaron Water Show. This is the weekend for that. And they have an impeccable sense of timing, don't they? Yes, they do. Just when I'm going to go over the scouting report of Matt Garza, here come the F-14s. Here comes another one, by the way. But Matt Garza will block it out and go to work. What was that nice try, pal, that was on there? Well, did you did you, did you notice when, you, when we get a center field shot of Matt Garza? Let's see what number he's wearing. Okay. Let's see, okay. That's hmm. Okay, and then there's a G, an R, and an A in his name, and it's five letters long. Base hit, carved into the left center alley like a number 17 for the Cubs used to do. And he's faster than you, Mark Grace. John Jay is in there with a hustling double. Darwin Barney cannot believe the call. That second by John Hirschbeck. Just a fastball middle of the plate. John Jay goes down and rifles it into left center field. Nice play by Alfonso Soriano getting it in. He gets it in on fly. And I'm, I'm saying that John Hirschbeck must have saw that there was no tag. Looked like Barney tagged the dirt and didn't necessarily tag the body. I think you're right. He had his back turned to the base runner. Great play by Soriano and a great throw. It was such a close play. Certainly the ball there before Jay. And it just looks like that hand may have gotten there before the tag. John Hirschbeck right there had the best look in the house. Cardinals off to a good start. Alan Craig will take inside. And we, uh, we will have to monitor Mr. Grace, the, uh, <laughs> the fighter pilots, because they're getting closer and closer here. I believe they delayed the start. Of the air and water show today because of the uh, the aforementioned nasty weather this morning. And we got rudely interrupted by a John Jay double. And I was going to tell you about nice try, pal. Number 17, five letters in his last name with a G and an R and an A. Four letters in the first name starts with an M and an A. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a lot of a lot of similarities. Except he's a pitcher. Nice try, pal. Craig fouls it back. All right, since we're talking about your time here spent with the Cubs, and, and you you were here for enough of the disappointments, the, sure. the, the high expectations, and they didn't quite work out. And just to finish up on Jim Hendry, who, who's a great guy, you, you wonder what's next. And, and owner Tom Rickett says he wants to marry old school and new school for the new GM. Somewhere in between Bill Veck and Theo Epstein is probably about right. And there are some candidates, some right here in town. The White Sox have a guy like that in Rick Hahn. The Rays have a guy in Andrew Friedman. You'll hear names like Josh Burns in Arizona, Dad Levine in Texas. Well, Josh Burns no longer with Arizona. Oh, right. He is now in San, San Diego. Diego. Yep. Yeah, he was let go last year by the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
Kevin Towers now the guy that has the Diamondbacks in first place as the GM. I don't think KT is going anywhere, but a guy like Burns, a guy like, well, and who knows whose contract's up. Tap towards third, that's foul. But Gracie, I'll say this, whoever comes in here and gets it right, can you imagine being the GM of this franchise when the Cubs finally win? You would never buy your own dinner the rest of your life. Oh, well, there's no question. In the 13 years that I spent in a Chicago Cub uniform, I mean, you find out just how badly not only the fans, but the players and just the city, the organization, just dying for not only a World Series title, but just some success. And I think Jim Hendry certainly... You'd have to say in his tenure that he had an above 500 record for this organization. That's pretty impressive. Lined in the left field and foul. You saw Mike Quaddy, the manager of the Cubs, and we'll talk more about his future in a moment. I think one thing to, to monitor here in this first inning, with again the the towers getting buzzed a little bit here with the the air show. Matt Garza, a little bit high strung. And you play with a guy named Steve Traxler, who sometimes during this air show, boy, he'd get frazzled. He'd step off that mound and he'd be cheesed off. Well, and back in, also back in the day you, uh, when the Mets, the New York Mets played at Shea Stadium, you always had airplane delays because the airplanes would fly from LaGuardia Airport right over Shea Stadium and it just meant guys stepping out of the box, guys stepping off the mound. And you just have to make sure you, you tune that out in what? this situation because these these airplanes going to be flying flying around here all day. And you know what? It's really cool. It, it's cool to sit back and look at, and the fans love it. Go well, from up here, except if you're Matt Garza and you're trying to win a ball game, that, I can understand it's a little disconcerting. Exactly. So, and you know, as we speak, you know they're flying by and they're in formation, and and it's it's a lot of fun to look at. But you're right, as if you're Matt Garza and Ed, Edwin Jackson today, you cannot let. These beautiful formations, these lovely airplanes distract you. But we're going to see a tenth pitch of this at bat here following the double from John Jay. Alan Craig having a very good at bat. He's trying to move John Jay to third base to set up Albert Pujols. Never a bad idea trying to set up Albert Pujols, one of the greatest hitters of all time. And Cub fans would say, wouldn't he look good in Cubby Blue? Oh, I, I think they would, uh, they would kind of end that rivalry. And, and all of a sudden from uh, from the hated Albert Pujols up here. That one's in play for Starlin Castro. And Pujols will come up with a base open. Well, Pujols is worn out the Cubs. Of course, he's worn out a lot of other teams, exactly. too. But you get a pretty good idea, too, listening to the fans here, how many of them are for St. Louis today when Pujols comes to the plate. Well, they come up by the bus loads from St. Louis, about a five-hour trip down I-55 or up I-55 if you're from St. Louis. And they always have plenty of Cub fans. And when you go down to St. Louis, there's always plenty of Cub fans down there as well. It's just a great National League rivalry. And it's respectful. It's, it's not like Yankees-Red Sox. There's a little more respect. Mm -hmm. Go around to the local establishments after the ball game. You'll see Cub fans and Cardinal fans sitting together talking about what just transpired in the three hours prior. It's good stuff. Well, you're saying there are local establishments around Wrigley? I've, I've heard. <laughs> I've heard stories, seen pictures. Well, for Pujols, uh, Gracie, through all the challenges and setbacks this year, now is 11th straight season of 30 home runs. Garza missing and not by much. Laz Diaz, your home plate umpire. Now, Garza, again, not to crawl completely inside his head here, but he's got that look right now like, okay, I'm getting squeezed a little bit. I couldn't finish off Alan Craig until the 10th pitch. Got these airplanes buzzing by here. He looks unsettled. Yeah, he picked the wrong day, evidently, right now. If you look at his body language right now, it's one of frustration. And these airplanes flying by. I'm trying to get Albert Pujols out. And I think in this situation also, it's not going to break his heart if if he walks Albert Pujols here. However, Lance Berkman having an MVP caliber season hitting behind Pujols. That's that's a dangerous rope to walk. 
And they're going to go ahead and put on Pujols now. And now Garza is going to step off again. Maybe probably thinking to Mike Quaddy, uh, I don't want to intentionally walk. Him. Boy, that, I mean, that, that really is that telling it. When's the last time we saw a guy step off on 3-0 and with the intentional walk sign up? Yeah. And, and I'm sure I'm sure Mike Quaddy would say, well, if you didn't go 3-0 on him in the first place, we wouldn't have to worry about it. Boy, he just slammed that rosin bag down. He's like yeah. a caged bear right now. He's taking a long, long time in between pitches. Yeah, snatching ball, looking in at Mike Quaddy. Boy, that's uh, he's slamming the bag. Yeah, it's a little insubordination there. Interesting times for Quaddy, of course, as well. The GM that hired him just got fired yesterday. Now. Stepping out, stepping off. Just no real flow at all to this first inning out of Matt Garza. And the thing I think he's got to be mindful of, too, is again, the body language just betrays him right now. He's already made six throwing errors this year. And if he gets a comebacker, he's got to be careful. He doesn't just fire one in frustration in the right field. That's exactly right. He's got to keep his head. Right now, he, like he's wanting those. Those are not strikes. They're close, but they're not strikes. Well, Laz Diaz is going to make him earn yeah. them. Laz is looking out at him like, if you throw it over the plate, trust me, my right arm will come up. But until then, another 2 0 count. Well, and for Matt Garza, we should point out, he is getting much better at keeping his emotions under control. It was uh, three years ago, he had it out with his catcher, Deanna Navarro with Tampa Bay right out on the mound in Arlington and that seemed to be a wake up call Gracie he watched the video of what a brat that made him look like and he understood it's just not cool to act that way. Well it's it, at a time and there's nothing wrong with being competitive there's nothing wrong with wanting to win. But there is something wrong with taking it out on your teammate or your teammates. Well and Joe Madden the, the wonderful manager of the Rays he called Garza I love this he said he's a recovering emotionalist. That sounds like that sounds like something <laughs> Joe Madden would say. It's, it's tough to remake someone who's high strung by nature, but everyone is trying, including Matt Garza, to get that done. Ball four. And now he's got to deal with David Freeze. Bases loaded. Does a pitching coach dare go out and talk to him, Mark? Well, might not be a bad idea, but right now I think, and as as we speak, wow, it's Quaddy going. It's Quaddy. This may be a monologue. This might not be a dialogue. You can see. This ought to be very interesting. I'd love to be a fly. If there was a wall out there, I'd love to be a fly on that wall and find out what's being said. Because very rarely do you see the manager come out in that situation. It's usually the pitching coach. But this is Mike Quaddy. And I imagine Matt Garza got a nice uh, little uh, shot of adrenaline from the mouth of Mike Quaddy. In other words, knock it off and let's go. David frees the batter. He homered yesterday. Quality fastball to the outside corner. To a guy who hit one out yesterday, his eighth of the year, the Cardinals ended up losing this game in extra innings. Breaking ball, strike two. Early returns are good. Little settle down session from the head honcho, from oh, Mike Quaddy. And I think, honestly, the 3-0 the uh, and then the intentional walk, you saw just how upset that got Garza, and that carried right into the next at-bat of Lance Berkman. I think he needed a little bit of a talking to. And a double play ball. All right, get back to that dugout, Matt Garza. Take it easy. How about you're, Mike Quaddy? You're out of the end. How about Mike Quaddy? Very impressive, number eight.
Been a very tough year for Mike Quaddy, and especially lately with the GM Jimmy Hendry being told to shove on out of here. Quaddy doesn't know what his future holds, but he was certainly out there right there with Matt Garza trying to settle him down. Well, I think this is the most important six weeks of Mike Quaddy's baseball career. He has been a terrific manager his entire career in the minor leagues, and also now he finally got this situation. We'll talk about it later. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah, Quaddy's Cubs lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the button. Castro and Barney, Ramirez and Pena, Marlon Bird and Alfonso Soriano. Colvin and Soto, and, yeah, Matt Garza batting ninth. Let's talk about Edwin Jackson here, too. His first start in Chicago since the White Sox dealt him to the Cardinals in late July. That's what he's done with St. Louis. He was 7-7, seven and seven, a 3.92 with the Sox. Darlin Castro to lead things off. Garza weaving in and out of trouble in that top of the first, but no score. There's strike one in the sprint pitcher profile for Edwin Jackson. Yeah, Edwin Jackson, you're going to see a lot of fastballs. He's one of the hardest throwers in the game, still in his mid-20s. He's got to focus in the first inning. He's had a lot of trouble in the first inning. If he gets through the first inning, he usually cruises. And that's a good way to start the first inning. If you come out throwing strikes... And you put the Chicago Cubs in swing mode, what I call swing mode, you're going to have success. The last time out, Jackson endured a 21 minute first inning, allowed three hits and a couple of walks. And his first inning ERA grace, so you're alluding to it, it's now in the mid sixes. And he left that start early, too. He had some cramping issues in his right hamstring. Takes care of Castro. Well, one up, one down. What a beautiful slider there. And that's the thing when you throw 95, 96 miles an hour, all of a sudden you speed the, the bat up of Castro. And then he was just a sitting duck for that beautiful slider. And you see if he can get through the first inning, and that is always a big hit. Six home runs in the first inning. Darwin Barney comes up. He had a, a triple and a homer yesterday. The Chicago Cubs organization and fans just in love with the middle of the diamond here. Darwin Barney, Starlin Castro defensively and offensively had terrific seasons. Marlon Bird also in center field has been terrific. And every once in a while, Darwin will do something like this, Josh. Yeah, only the second time he's done it this year, but into the basket it goes. On the ground, third base, right there is Freeze. Out number two. So far, so very good for Edwin Jackson. Well, you wanted that quick, quality first inning. He's two-thirds of the way there. And the way you do it is to, is to come out throwing strikes, and that's been the problem for Jackson. He seems to have a little problem early in the ballgame finding that release point for his pitches. So far, he's been a strike machine. Ramos Ramirez starting to get his season going. Too little, too late. The Cubs again are 18 and a half games out. Well, Jackson pounds it right in there on the inner half at 94. How about that? That is that flipping amazing? the switch right there. Goodness. It shows me that uh, Haramas doesn't like hitting in cold weather. When the, <laughs> well, when the weather he was, warms he was up, so to the wrong he. team That's then, exactly son. right. <laughs> I still can't believe we got 80 in sunshine right now. It was torrential oh. rain about noon today. <laughs> it was pouring up until about a couple hours ago. Now it's just a beautiful day. Gorgeous here yesterday, and they sardined 42,343 fans in here yesterday. 103% of capacity. Pretty amazing. A, a team like the Chicago Cubs. Buried at the bottom of the division, but yet these Cub fans can't wait to come watch them play the Cardinals. Traveling towards center, grabbed by John Jay. Inning over. We are at the end of one here on Fox.
And we go from the, the rain to the sunshine. We also go to the second inning after this. game presented by Gillette is sponsored by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. By the makers of new Bear Advanced Aspirin, the official pain reliever of Major League Baseball. And by Ford. Drive one. Well, yesterday we had the aerial fighter pilots, a general manager switch, a record crowd, so much to talk about. Would you believe Larry King was here to sing the seventh inning stretch? Take me out to the ball game. Absolutely perfect that Larry King was here for that yesterday. Always something to talk about with the Cubs and the Cardinals, but as we've discussed already here today, Mark Grace, even more so with the fact that they've made that GM switch and all the Carlos Zambrano nonsense percolating around here. We'll right. have some time to talk about that. Yeah, there's been a lot go, go awry here on the north side of Chicago this year. High expectations will always do that. That leads to people losing their jobs when you have high expectations, a high payroll, and, and, and an underachieving ball club. And Matt Gross is finally going to throw the baseball. Maybe. I, we, we hope. Channeling his inner Steve Traxel. <laughs> Second Traxel reference already today. And, and Steve, if you're out there, hello. Love you, buddy. Schumacher, Molina, Terrio. To bat here for St. Louis. Oh, beautiful breaking ball 0 and 2. I remember the first 20 pitches of that first inning for Garza. And he seemed very much out oh. of sorts. And then we'll yeah. settle down session. And you can tell in his body language he was getting negative with himself. Wormburner towards third off the bat of Schumacher. One up, one away. A direct TV game break for you. The Cardinals are chasing the Brewers. The Brewers are not making this easy. Ryan Braun, two run home run. He could be your MVP this year. Could be. It's now a 2-1 game, by the way. Get the most baseball games in HD. Call 1-800. Direct TV. The Cardinals, well, you know, maybe catching Milwaukee Gracie starting to look like a futile pursuit. The Brewers have won 20 of their last 23, and that's all without Ricky Weeks. Golly. Zach Granke quietly having a terrific second half. Strike one to Molina, and you know, the Cardinals don't necessarily have to catch those streaking Brewers to make the postseason. The wild card is a possibility. But the Atlanta Braves don't lose very much either. No, and San Francisco and or Arizona in the right. mix for that, too. Hey, not for nothing, since Mike Quaddy went out there, eight straight strikes for Matt Garza. Pretty amazing. And you got to give Mike Quaddy a lot of props. He saw, he saw himself. He tells his pitching coach, you stay in the dugout. I'm going to go out here and take care of this. 
And I don't think there's any question. That was a monologue. That was not a dialogue. And Garza is a completely different pitcher since that meeting on the mound, Josh. And he's going to throw the baseball sometime shortly. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> and another strike. Nine of those in a row. The Ford keys to the game. What you got, Mr. Grace? Well, I'm glad you asked. Oh, I'm glad I asked. Well, for the, for the St. Louis Cardinals, clean it up. They played a sloppy ball game. They gave away a ball game yesterday. They've got to clean it up because they've got to get red hot. And with the Cubs, stay professional. There has been so many dark clouds over this season. And your GM, a very popular GM with the players, just got replaced. And what you've got to do in these situations is, you know, don't worry about Carlos Zambrano. Don't worry about Jim Hendry. Your job is to come here and play nine innings of the best baseball you can possibly play. You owe it to the fans, you owe it to your teammates, and you owe it to this city to go out there and continue to be professional, even though it's been a tough time this year. Well, in typical Jim Hendry, he took the high road on his way out. He, he admits he cried like Dick Vermeil in his words, but he also took full blame for the bad contracts that he authorized, most notably that of Milton Bradley. And Milton Bradley? You, you, you just thought you just thought he was he was going to be a good fit. He had a terrific year in Texas the year before. It just didn't work out. That one just misses. Yeah, that would have been 11 straight strikes from Garza. Swinging and it did he I think he did get a piece, oh, yeah. but it's grabbed by Soto for that third strike Got here Molina one of the more difficult players in all of baseball to strike out you're in you're out Don't tell that to Matt Garza. He just continues to pound the strikes on this time. He elevates a fastball And it's foul tipped right into the mid of Giovanni Soto so Dominating Matt Garza since the meeting on the mound with Mike Quaddy you hear some murmuring from this crowd as Ryan Terrio steps up. Former Cub who rankled some Cubby feathers back in May. Talking about how he's on the right side of the rivalry now. What a great rivalry it is. Cardinals and Cubs. Matt Garz is back in control. And we still have no score. Presented by Gillette is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds.
Cardinals and the Cubs on Fox today. Josh Lewin and the former Cub great Mark Grace. Happy to be with you and the Cardinals need to start making up some ground. They've imported Edwin Jackson to help their their starting pitching. That's probably a good place to start when talking about the Cardinals Mark. The Cardinals simply have to pitch better. The loss of Adam Wainwright back in March can't be understated. That was, that but was painful certainly. Still though they, they haven't had a single five game win streak all year. As Carlos Pena pops on towards the crowd into the crowd and with a with a talented offense like the St. Louis Cardinals have they score a lot of runs. You would think that they would find a way to piece together you know, an eight nine game winning streak. I mean even even below average teams find a way over the course of the season to do something like that. And this is not a below average team Tony La Russa is managing. This is a very talented team. Yep, there's seven games over 500, but their longest win streak is four. Change up at 87 miles an hour. That was a pretty good fastball back in my day. <laughs> Golly, everybody just throws so hard anymore. It's all those numbers for Tony La Russa. More wins than any active manager in baseball today. There's a popular thought, Gracie, that if Ozzy Guillen leaves the White Sox to go manage the Marlins next year, wouldn't Tony La Russa maybe like to go back to where it all began managerially on the south side of this great city of Chicago? Had some great wake up, Tony. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, it's certainly uh, a possibility. He's still very good friends with Jerry Reinsdorf and a lot of the Sox brass. Well, the and, he, and he had great success over there yeah. on the south side. Well, the two of them, La Russa and Reinsdorf, were spotted dining together on the Cardinals off day and boy that was like TMZ baseball <laughs> style at that point. That, yeah Chicago style that is definitely that's definitely going to fuel a lot of rumors. Yes, Pena right waves at it yeah 96 miles an hour just could not catch up. I mean, this is just no nonsense baseball right there. Here's a fastball belt high out over the plate and he just blew it right past Carlos Payne. Marlon Bird comes up next and so we were talking to Tony La Russa before the game. He was I think really stunned when we told him that this is the 240th game now that he has managed against the Chicago Cubs. That's like a season and two thirds. It's unbelievable. That just shows you how his longevity and how long he's been around one hopper hard one hopper out to Terry O quickly disposes of Marlon Bird and typical Tony La Russa when we told him that his only question was what's my record, what's my record? am I up am I up <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's about 15 games up Alfonso Soriano comes up next Tony La Russa had a, a pretty inglorious playing career but says maybe my, my biggest moment was as a Cub right here. He scored the winning run for the Cubs opening day of 1973. He pinch ran for Ron Santa. And Soriano takes the strike. I want to know who the manager was that took Ron Santo out of the game. <laughs> well, Tony says what's funny about all that is he had, he had a, a bad arm. Mm -hmm. And he's thinking, oh, if I got to go in and play third base in this cold weather, I'm done. So if this game goes extra innings, I'm going to be exposed. They're going to send me down tomorrow. And sure enough, a rally, a bases loaded walk. He scores a winning he run scored. on a bases loaded walk. He says that bought me another two weeks in the big leagues. <laughs> I didn't have to go in and play. <laughs> He's very humble about his playing career. And it was a very short major league career. He more than made up for it with being a Hall of Fame manager. Soriano peels one foul. Edwin Jackson reached 98 miles an hour with a fastball earlier in this count. The last time on Fox, Gracie, for what it's worth, four weeks ago, he shut out the Tigers 5 0. First complete game shutout since his no hitter a year ago. That one 96, but too high. He's a former All-Star when he was with the Detroit Tigers. He was an All-Star. He's one of the more well-rounded pitchers. Little loop shot caught up to Schumacher's got it. 
And still no score here at Wrigley. We're back after a word from your local Fox station. Baseball presented by Gillette Fusion and ProGlide. Josh Lewin with Mark Grace and Matt Garza for the Cubs in that first inning. Wore his emotions on his sleeve, on his cap, on his pants leg. They were everywhere. And I guess, Mark, that gets us right into a discussion of Carlos Zambrano. So talented, but so puzzling and so frustrating. And now the Cubs don't know what's going to happen with him. Well, yeah, Carlos Zambrano. A very, a very popular player here, and, and a very good player here. I mean, a guy that has has been in his career, you know, talked about as a Cy Young Award winner. He's uh, he's had a fabulous career here, a lot of success here. But you know, Carlos Zambrano, anytime things don't go right, he loses his mind. And I've always, I've always, my, my father taught me when I was young, Josh, that your character as a man. Is judged in bad times, not in good times. In, in good times, when when he's 15 and four, or when when you're in the middle of a 15 game hitting streak, Steve right three Garza is rolling now. They just destroyed Jackson right there. And you know when when you're in a 15 game hitting streak and you're hitting 320, you're a good guy. You're you're a good guy. It's easy to be a good guy in those situations. But when you're in an, when you're in 0 for 25 slump, or when you your last three starts, you've got an ERA of around 10. Or when you've blown three saves in a row, something or when like you that. You give up five homers in That's Atlanta. That's exactly right. Now, if, can you still be the, the same good guy in those times that you are in in, in the good times? And, and with with Carlos Zambrano, the answer is is an emphatic no. So, as a baseball player, I would have to judge Carlos Zambrano as a, as a large lack of character. And no, none of his teammates have come to his rescue. John Jay is behind 0 and 2. Let's take you back to last Friday. Cubs and the Braves. He gives up the five home runs, including a three run shot by Chipper Jones. And then he's thrown out of the game. He clears out his he got locker. His he got his wish. And it's just kind of the, the latest thread in a fabric, as you're suggesting. That one outside sure. the J. It's not a first time offense. And Cardinal fans over the age of 30 will nod and remember their version of Zambrano. Remember Joaquin Andujar? He was demonstrative and 
emotional, but even Andujar never pulled the kind of shenanigans Zambrano just did no. in Atlanta. Not at all. A couple of hops towards short. John Jay is going to be out with the tag at first base, a throw that sailed. Nice play by Carlos Payne, one of the best glove men in all of baseball. And has been for years. Castro got a little careless with the throw. Pena skies up there like the good athletic first baseman that well, it's the best athlete on the field. Every game is the first baseman. You know that, Josh. Well, and if Sean Dunstan ever happened to sail one like that, there was Mark Grace to make that exact play. Well, you couldn't get a craft single under me when I jumped, but <laughs> Pena showing some athleticism. Well, and just to finish up on Zambrano, too, clearing out his locker, saying that he's done. I'm retiring. That's mm -hmm. it. Cub fans have seen that one, that walking out on the team thing, right? Sammy Sosa did it too, but but on the season's final day, not right. not in early August. Right. And you know, there's there's a bunch of guys right there that are out there, you know, in a in a, in a disappointing season, in a season that uh, has been lost. You know, they're still out there paying the price. Towering pop up from Alan Craig. Squeezed in foul ground, and we're still throwing zeros around here at Wrigley. No score between the Cardinals and the Cubs. Today and here's Tyler Colvin to lead things off bottom three Edwin Jackson who was pitching on the south side of Chicago not too long ago dealt from the White Sox to the Cardinals. He's matched up against Matt Garza. And Tyler Colvin eyeballs a strike yesterday Tyler Colvin ended things in the 10th inning and got a nice fat hit from Octavio Dotel. Laid it right on a tee for him. It cost him a ball game. And Tyler Colvin was needing some kind of a highlight this year. It's just been a real struggle for for a very talented youngster, a guy that I've always liked. His approach in the batter's box. I love, love his swing. It just doesn't make any sense at all how this kid's hitting a buck 44 this year. There's a heck of a tactician. Here in Chicago for a heading coach. Business. That's Rudy Jaramillo. If he can't fix that swing, nobody can. Rudy Jaramillo 
You talk about a, a no excuses guy. What, what a perfect thing for the Cubs to have because I think a lot of Cub fans will tell you enough with the the excuses. If you want to complain that it's too hot, too cold, too many day games. Colvin takes strike three. Basically, they decided here, and I think Rudy Jaramillo wears this very well, Gracie. That until there's a box score line for bad luck, everyone should just kind of be quiet, right? right. Rudy Jaramillo had surgery for prostate cancer three years back, and there's a great columnist in Fort Worth, Jim Reeves, and the way he put it, and he said, when I heard Rudy Jaramillo had cancer, I felt bad for the cancer. <laughs> and sure enough, Rudy is back at work within what? Six weeks. Yeah, it's going to take more than that to take down that man right there. One of the most respected hitting coaches in the game. A little fixer up project here at the plate as well with Giovanni Soto. Former rookie of the year, and then it's been a struggle since. Yeah, kind of weird because Soto, after that first season, he figured it would just be onward and upward, but he, he fell back, and that was kind of idle towards what's respectable. But it's not superstar looking anymore. No. And, you know, a lot of people were expecting this guy to be, you know, a perennial all star. It just hasn't turned out that way. Expectations are tough, though. You played with a guy, Jerome Walton, right? It was sure. rookie of the year right away, and then a, a quick fade after that. Well, I think. Injuries certainly. Hey, there's a classy man right there. Look how good you're looking. <laughs> I look a lot younger, don't I? <laughs> Number 17 can still be worn here in Chicago. Can't do that in St. Louis. That's retired for the great Dizzy Dean. And I love this. I, I looked in their media guide. Here's what they say about Dizzy Dean. You'd love this. About number 17. You ready? Okay. See if this doesn't resonate with you. One of baseball's zaniest characters. <laughs> he was also a warrior and a winner. He was known for his fun-loving lifestyle and his storytelling as much as his success. Following his playing days, Dizzy Dean was a colorful broadcaster. Who became an ambassador for baseball? That all of that sounds like you. Well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put myself in Dizzy Dean's shoes, but that's very kind. And Dizzy Dean, one of the one of the ultimate characters, as you said. That's ball four. Soto Just takes control. How great as Dizzy Dean there? was, he he didn't do that. Of course, you never won thirty games I in a single won 30 season. Games but. In a year. Well, and you won't tell this story on yourself, but I'll tell it for you. You are the Pied Piper still around here. Everybody, the, the peanut vendors, if there was an elevator here, the elevator operator, everybody loves their Mark Grace. Well, it was, this that one's popped up. Two holes, not going to be able to make the play. That's weird seeing a number 17 in a Cub uniform try to bunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I, I wasn't uh, asked to do that too often. <laughs> Find a way to get on base and let either Andre Dawson or Ryan Sandberg or Sammy Sosa or let somebody drive you in. But it was a wonderful 13 years at this ballpark. That one pushed and Pujols going a second with it. Matt Garza, oh, you... I saw you do that once or twice, a double play thing, to be honest. Well, I pity the fool that punts it firmly to Albert Pujols. <laughs> it is going to be a double play just like this. Albert Pujols showing I'm more than just a hitter.
Today's game presented by Gillette is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Sprint, all together, now. And by Warner Brothers Pictures, Contagion, in theaters September 9th. Well, you don't have to go see it, just... I think some friends of yours would probably enjoy it. But... Hey, the Cubs unveiling a statue of the great Ron Santo not too long ago. Gracie, I wanted to make sure you saw this. I know you loved Ronnie and, I, and Ronnie I, I, loved I, you. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to go by and check it out. Man. Placed right near the statue of Ronnie's longtime teammate Billy Williams on the plaza directly southeast of the ballpark. And, of course, Ron Santo passed away this past December. And, and I can tell you, I can tell you, you, you travel this country as you have and I have in, in baseball, Josh, and you will always run into at least one million people that will claim that they are the biggest Cub fan on earth. <laughs> you will. I can promise you the statue of that man, Ron, Ron Santo, was the biggest Cub fan ever created, and it is not even close. And we miss him every day. Now, how many times are have you, you know, sit around at a restaurant or you go somewhere in uh, either Detroit, Michigan, or Dallas, Texas, where you've worked, and people tell you that they are, without a doubt, the biggest Cub fan in the world? No, everybody's tied for second behind exactly. the late, great Ronnie Santo. You're right. Here is Albert Pujols. Boy, Matt Garz has been dealing ever, telling ever since that wobble to, to start the game. Somehow that breaking ball missed Pooh holes, but I'd say through the first third of this ball game, Josh, that the player of the game isn't a player. It's Mike Quaddy, the manager. He, is, he has found a way to light a quality fire under Matt Garza. 21 strikes against four balls since that mound since visit. All right, slips behind Pooh holes here, two and one. Through the first 10 years of Pujols' career, you're talking about more home runs than Hank Aaron had at that point. More runs batted in than Stan Musial had. A higher batting average than Tony Gwynn had, and more runs scored than Ricky Henderson. So <laughs> what, what, whatever category you want to look at, I mean, Henderson's the yeah. greatest in runs scored, right? Gwynn, the greatest hitter. Pujols, better than, better than, than all those guys the first 10 years. And then the power numbers as well. Ridiculous. And people forget, unfortunately, he's such a great hitter. You, you, you don't talk about what a great defender he is at first, as that was skied to right field. Hall of Fame human being, too. Yep, pops to right. There was an early hit in this game. Remember, John Jay led off the proceedings with that double into the alley in left center. And there has not been a base runner since. Either team. Yeah, Garza and Jackson dominating. Well, there's already one hit between both teams. Well, remember, both these guys, Edwin Jackson and Matt Garza, threw no hitters last summer. Jackson against Tampa Bay, Garza for Tampa Bay. One month and one day apart last year. All right, but if someone is going to take one up and out of here, this might be your candidate, Lance Berkman. The wind's starting to blow straight in. Off the leg. Well, that's just a quality fastball to the outside corner at 96 miles an hour. Cars is feeling it now. It's going to take a pretty good poke to get it out of here this afternoon as the wind starts to make itself known. No ballpark in baseball. Is more affected by the weather than Wrigley Field. Now everybody comes in here. The, what's the first thing they look at is the flags. The flags. Where, where are they? The opposing pitcher, when he shows up on the bus, the first thing he does is look out to center field. Okay, which way are they blowing? Uh oh. Or all right. <laughs> you saw that graphic on Berkman behind only Mickey Mantle, and that's kind of 
appropriate in a weird way. The fact that Lance Berkman is a switch hitter is because Lance's dad, well, his hero was Mickey Mantle. And he figured, my son, I don't care if he's six years old, I'm turning him into Mickey Mantle 2.0. And make him a switch hitter just like the Mick. He's one of the greatest switch hitters of all time. This guy in the batter's box, Lance Berkman. A lot better in his career left handed than right handed. And that's usually the case with, with most switch hitters. But look at the company. Berkman was courted by these Cubs this past off season. The A's, the Rockies, the Pirates, the Rangers were after his services too, but the Cardinals won out. And boy, are they happy that they did. Well, he rededicated himself in the offseason. Had a bad year last year in Houston and in New York for the Yankees. And finally oh. realizes he gets his doors blown off there by Matt Garza. That he had to get himself in better shape, and he certainly did that. He's having an MVP caliber season. Garza got him though, some high cheese. Next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, the Tigers and the Twins. Where the Braves take on the Mets, they'll be there for that one. The Pirates take on these Cardinals or the Rockies against the Dodgers. Next week's telecast of Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Gillette Fusion Pro Glide starting at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. Check local listings. That's the ball to David Freeze. And this was an important inning for Matt Garza because he's going through the teeth of this Cardinal order. It started with Albert Pujols and then it kept going with Lance Berkman. Now David Freeze, a 319 hitter coming into this one. So far, Garza is making it look easy. And I'd suggest to you, Gracie, not to go all pop psychologist on you again, but it actually started a couple minutes before he had to face Pujols. He bunted into that double play. Right. And had to just wipe the slate mm -hmm. clean and not let that affect him on the mound. That, that goes flying. flying. Goodness gracious. But to Garza's credit, I mean, as, as off kilter as he seemed in that top of the first inning, I think you and I kind of looked at each other after he bunted in that double play, like, uh oh, now he might become yeah. unraveled again, but he, he sure hasn't. I would imagine the conversation something like, uh, you know what, young man? You can sit out here and get negative with yourself and blame everybody else for the problems, or you can realize what you're out here to do and do it. Well, I think he chose plan B. One thing that's got to be frustrating for Garza deep down, too, is the Cubs just don't seem to score any runs to support him. This is a very typical Garza game. You're right. Edwin Jackson going pitch for pitch with him. On the other end of things. David freeze. <laughs> Take a look. You are out. Ten in a row set down by Garza.
500, but they are still looking up at the Milwaukee Brewers trying to catch a team that has won 20 out of 23, and they're winning again today. Edwin Jackson on the mound. Chris Carpenter is going to join us for a little conversation this inning. 16 and 9 last year, 17 and 4 the year before that, and led the, the National League in ERA. And Chris Carpenter is having a, a fine season here in 2011. The, the fear is for Cardinal fans is just not going to be enough. And Chris, how frustrating is it? As this inning begins, that boy Milwaukee just won't slow down. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been crazy. I mean, they, they got a good ball club. They they showed it last year. Uh, they made some nice uh, pickups this winter with uh, with their pitching. They're picking up Frankie and Markham, and and then uh, that late addition to Nigel Morgan. You know, uh, uh, at the end of spring training there from Washington. I mean, these guys go out and play. They play hard. They got a good lineup. Uh, they play pretty solid defense and they pitch well. I mean, you go into the bullpen and they've got uh, those guys there at the back end of the bullpen that don't give you a chance. And, and uh, you know, you got to you got to play 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 better than them. And it's it's been tough. Hey, hey Chris, as, as one of the leaders on your ball club, how do you keep yourself and your teammates from getting too frustrated when you look up in your scoreboard watch and you see that, that those Brewers are not losing? It's it's been it's been tough, but you you know you come to the ballpark every day. We're a bunch of professionals. Um, we had high expectations coming into spring training. Losing Adam Wainwright was a, was a tough tough shot at us, but uh, we were able to uh, to come out and start playing well early on. And and uh, you know we, we got some key injuries with uh, losing Matt a few times, David Freeze a few times. Uh, it's been difficult, but uh, you keep coming, being positive, doing everything you can. To, to play the best you can and, and at the end of the day uh, we'll see if we can do it if not uh, Milwaukee was better than us Edwin Jackson just gave up his first hit and a nice little pickup that you guys had at the, at the end of July I guess to, to make sure that you're importing it, it's tough because you guys never had Adam Wainwright this year absolutely but uh, you know Kyle McCollum stepped in and did a nice job early on picking up Edwin was uh, was a big key I think uh, also getting those guys in the bullpen with uh, with Dotel and uh, I, I can't even still can't say Zepchinski's name, but uh, <laughs> you did pretty good right there. <laughs> um, and, and then uh, you know picking up Arthur late too was was nice. So um, yeah, you know he solidified our bullpen a little bit. Uh, Edwin's done a nice job. He's a, he's a great kid. Uh, he works hard. Uh, he's obviously got a phenomenal arm and, and great stuff. And if he gets a little more consistent here, uh, I think he's going to be better. Yadier Molina doing the, the catching and then everybody raves about how he calls a game. Let me get inside your mind a little bit and ask you what it's like to work with that guy. Yeah, it, it, just consistent, man. He, he uh, you know, he, he works hard off the field uh, with video and knowing the hitters and, and those things. And, and it, it just makes it easy. He knows uh, he knows what we're doing. He knows the game plan. He knows how to stick to it. Uh, he, he knows what each pitcher's got and how they like to use their stuff, which is which is great. And and then defensively, you know, blocking balls, throwing guys out, picking guys off. Everybody's seen that, and and that's what uh, it makes it just that much easier. Um, I've said many a times, um, I, I don't know how many people out there have seen that movie, The Blind Side, where they talk about that uh, what is it, the left tackle, and how important he is to the quarterback, but nobody ever sees him. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's uh, a good analogy. That's uh, that's Yadier Molina. You, you don't ever see him a ton. You don't really know uh, all the small little things that he's doing, but uh, he's doing a lot of things to help us out and protect us, just like uh, just like that left tackle is for the quarterback. Thank you for allowing us to promote NFL on Fox right <laughs> off of that. So. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you know, it was weird. I read the book, and, I, and everybody always asked me about well, Yadier Molina. Yeah, and when I read that book, and then, and then I watched the movie, I was like, man, it makes sense. It's just what it is. Uh, they, they talked about how wide receivers are the superstars and quarterbacks are the superstars, and neither of them could do either. Either one, if they didn't have that guy, uh, guy protecting them, and, and that's what Yadi does. It's a, he's a, a phenomenal catcher, very smart kid, uh, and, and works real hard at his job. Ball and a strike to count to Darwin Barney, who's bunting now. Jackson scrambles; he's got it. And Castro on the second base. Hey, Chris, uh, you've always been a team guy. Your reputation for being a, being a, a team first guy. So this might be an uncomfortable question. Can you critique your season this year? How do you feel about your season? Yeah, you know, uh, a little bit of everything. I was I was inconsistent early on. I uh, I started off, uh, you know, not as consistent as I'd like to be. And, and then here and there, a few things have happened where I give up that uh, that big hit or the big homer or walk a guy or we we make a mistake defensively. But uh, those are all parts of the game. Uh, everything happens for a reason, and, and I, I just wasn't consistent enough to, early on to, to do the things I needed to do. I was giving up a lot of hits, uh, uh, not controlling counts the way I'm supposed to, and, and, and giving the uh, the offense a chance to to get going. And, and lately, I've, I've been doing a better job at that. And, and when you do those things, uh -oh. yeah, that is an uh-oh if you're a Cardinal fan for sure. Ramirez to left. You know, we 
we talk about guys being a first ball fastball hitter a lot in baseball and I don't know of, of many guys who attack a first pitch like Aramis Ramirez. Well this is a this is a hanging slider right there. Edwin Jackson just spins one up there. It does nothing and guys like Aramis Ramirez they make their living on mistakes like that. Chris you know you, you faced uh, Aramis Ramirez so many times you just know once you release that ball and it's going to hang you just want to grab it right back. Don't yeah, absolutely you? Do. He's, got, he's got some really good numbers against me. He's probably one of my tough, toughest at bats in the, in the league. This that guy he uh, hits break strike breaking balls mistake breaking balls very well and, and of course can handle that uh, that up out over fastball pretty well too and uh, he's been good for a long time and um, you know he's always been a tough at bat against me. Take us take us through right now what Ed, Edwin Jackson's feeling. What does he have to do right now to get himself back? Yeah you just get back like you know, exactly what I was saying right before that home run about controlling counts not falling up, falling behind and, and getting the ball where you want it. Uh, it's all about execution. It doesn't matter if you can throw 97 miles an hour or not. If you can't execute that uh, that pitch and keep the ball out of the middle of the strike zone you're not going to have a chance. And, and uh, I, you know what I was saying I was doing a lot of that early on falling behind not controlling counts and, and uh, you know that that puts the defense on their heels. Uh, it gives the offense a chance to uh, to get aggressive, and you, they they find those balls that find the hole and, and put good swings when you're when you're aggressive and, and ahead in the count. Uh, you know, they don't they don't put as, as many good swings on the ball, and, and you just need to control counts as a bottom line. That's a hot hitter right now. Ramirez is 17 for his last 34. Just launched his 24th home run of the year. Yeah, he's what he's got after the, how many has he got after the All Star break? Uh, about rough. 10. Yeah, he's, yeah. That's kind of the way. That, that's his mo. He's always been a great second half player. Yeah. And a lot of Cub fans would say, "Yeah, uh -huh. we, we need some of that in the first. If this was driven to right center. That's off the bat of Pena, and it gets down and it skips by out there. Pena's on his way past second. Yeah, he's trying it. Yeah. Heading for third, he is safe at third base. Fastball out over. That's where Pena loves it. He gets it in the gap, and by the time Jay gets it in, it's a perfect relay. This is something Cub first baseman rarely do. Try for three, and he gets in there just ahead of the tag. Carlos looked like he was content with second base, and then he decides, okay, I got to get to third, just ahead of the tag. Perfect relay there by the Cardinals. You can see Pena's heel gets in there just ahead of the tag of David Fries. And the, Cubs trying to have a big inning now. Just his second triple in the last three years, actually. And his second of this season. Well, triples make you tired. Nothing, how, wrong, nothing wrong with stopping at second. How would you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Chris, one more thing real quick. And I feel bad we got you here with homers and triples flying yeah. around here and everything. <laughs> yeah, but working great time. Well, Marlon Bird will be the batter. 2 nothing Cubs. You, you touched on it earlier, but uh, you, you guys, as frustrating as it is that the Brewers are where they are, and the infield, by the way, creeping in here, thinking about a possible bunt, not happening. What, what about the wild card? Do you guys start looking at that? I mean, I know you, you haven't given up on catching Milwaukee, but do you peek at the wild card portal, too? Um, any way you can. Uh, you can peek at anything. <laughs> any way you can make it in, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just continue, like I said, you just continue to play. We knew coming into this season, like I said, we had expectations. We had high expectations on uh, on our year, but we also. There's Bird, left center, to make it three to nothing. Marlon Bird hightails it for second, and he is in there safely. All right, we got to get you out of here before it's like a nine run inning. Yeah, thanks, Bird. Yeah, no problem. Thank, Thank you, Chris, guys. Best of luck to you, brother. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it, buddy. Well, the Cubs, who did not have a hit coming into this inning, have now hit for the cycle in this fourth inning. And now Tony La Russa, not Dave Duncan, the pitching coach, going to come out and have a conversation with Edwin Jackson. It has just come crashing down on Edwin and the Cubs half of the fourth inning. Now, keeping in mind the Cardinals were thinking about a, a bunt from Bird with the runner at third and just one out, but he's swinging instead. He's got a double. He got a fastball middle in and he just cut it off and rifled it into left center field. Edwin Jackson trying to find some answers now when he was just so dominant early. First time through the lineup, he did not allow a hit. Second time through, now they're four for four against him. And the only out he's gotten this inning was a sacrifice bunt off the bat of Darwin Barney. Everything else hit very hard. 
Brings up Soriano. And strike one to him. You saw La Russa go out there and have a little settle down session, just like Claudia had gone out there, had to settle down with Garza. We'll see how this conversation worked with Tony La Russa. Nice of Chris Carpenter to come on and talk with us during this big inning for the Chicago Cubs. Timing is everything, Josh. Yeah, it is. So we appreciate him popping on for sure. Knocked down by Molina. Beautifully executed block there by Yadier Molina. A would be wild pitch just gets snuffed right out. He could be on his way to a fourth gold glove. No Cardinals ever had four gold gloves in the catcher's position. Just perfect mechanics for blocking the baseball. The ball just stays right in front of him, and Marlon Bird has to stay at second base. Well, just a challenge fastball right there. Maybe an angry fastball there, Josh, at 96 miles an hour to Soriano from Jackson. This looks more like, man, I'm ticked off right now. I'm just going to rear back and throw it as hard as I can and take my chances. And he got a foul ball with it. Another beautiful block there by Molina. You know, it's one thing to, to block a ball. It's another thing to, to keep it near enough to you that keep the runner in, at second base can go. Keep it in reaching distance. I mean, just soft hands. That ball's going nowhere. I mean, he is just a Berlin wall back there. It's, it's just as good as you can do it for, for blocking. Three runs in in the bottom of the fourth. And Gracie, you had mentioned with the wind, the little bit that we have here, it is blowing in. It would take a, a bit of a poke to get one out. A, a nice low line drive, like the one Ramirez hit, just kind of sizzled off that bat towards left. That's the yeah. kind of ball that's going to go. Yeah, yeah. The, a ball like that is just crushed. I mean, the only field that's going to hold that is, is O'Hare Field. the outside corner down goes Soriano. Soriano was not happy with the call from Laz Diaz. Looked like a pretty good pitch to me. Edmund Jackson after a conversation with Tony La Russa bounces right back and he slices the outside corner with a fastball. That's a quality pitch right there. Folks this is your football season. Create your fantasy football team today at FoxSports.com. Fox Fantasy Football is brand new and better than ever. Play today at FoxSports.com slash fantasy. Put it in the St. Louis Chicago perspective there for you. Like only you can, John. Well, our graphics department really, <laughs> but you playing fantasy this year? I'm not. Come on. I'm not. You know why? Because you're bad at it? Because I stink. <laughs> My teams, year in and year out, stink. So I've decided, why well, throw all the way that hard-earned money at fantasy football? And, it, and also with fantasy football, I find that it takes away from rooting for my favorite teams. Yeah, what if whoever's playing the Arizona exactly. Cardinals, what if you've gotten exactly. that forte? And what if the Bears are playing your Arizonans? That one chipped into the air by Colvin. I think enough people will be playing, though, besides you, I think. The fantasy the other, football will the other survive. Tens of millions. Yeah. Aramis Ramirez, two run shot. Part of a three run inning for Chicago.
Run support for Matt Garza. Coming in at today, 13 runs have been scored for him while he was on the mound. His last nine starts. Oh, gosh. So it's an average of what? About one, one and a half per start. Today he's got three. Ramos Ramirez accounting for two with a home run. This is nearly uncharted territory for Matt Garza pitching with a three run lead here in the middle of the ball game. This is where as a starter you've got to have a shutdown inning. The offense just went out and got three with the wind blowing in. It was imperative for yourself and your team for you to go out there and have another crisp clean inning. When suddenly the Cardinals bats have just gone away. They've got two hits in their last ten innings Gracie both by John Jay. Yeah, they had they had the game well in hand yesterday afternoon and then they just decided after four runs well that was enough and they just quit scoring and allowed the Cubs to get right back in the ball game and steal it late. Matt Garza owns the only complete game a Cub has thrown all year. Isn't that amazing? Well, I'll put it to you this way. They've got nine complete games, Gracie, in the last six years. Okay, 40 years ago, 1971, they had nine complete games in April of 1971. They've had nine in the last six years now. It's just how the game has changed. Now, with the emergence of left-handed specialists, right-handed specialists, Seventh inning guys, eighth inning guys, closers. You just the, the the complete game is just a dying breed. Unless you're unless you're a Texas Ranger under Nolan Ryan. Well, the, the the patron saint of match -em ups, of course, is in that St. Louis dugout. Tony mm -hmm. Larusa really liked doing the whole. Here's my lefty for your lefty thing, mm -hmm. and my righty for your righty. But you're right, Nolan Ryan in, in Texas has told his guys, "Hey, look, you just keep going." Yeah. We'll let you know. Schumacher, a little bloop shot towards left, sinking, base hit. Matt Garza had that tough first inning. And it took him a while to settle down, but as we look at our Burger King mini moment, after he gave up that John Jay double and started walking guys after that, Mike Quaddy visits. Puts a hand on his shoulder, settles him down, two strikes and a double play. Well, we had a few more things to say to him after the inning. I'm sure that was more nicely done. Good job. Now, let's get refocused. Another one of those double plays would come in handy right about now. And Molina has hit into 18 of those. Cardinals have hit into the most double plays of any team in the National League. It was just put a dent in any momentum you had. That one slicing and it is foul into the crowd. Very little foul room here at Wrigley Field. Hitters love that. Pitchers hate it. That's the most perilous spot of all oh. right there. You got what, two yeah. inches to navigate? I used to see Andre Dawson. Had a whole bunch of different left fielders, and boy, see guys just get hammered off that padded wall. It hadn't been padded the whole time as that one's popped up. And Ramirez in that coach's box area. Not that any coach ever actually stands in the coach's box. But Not anymore, no. One away, Terrio comes up. Well, and the thing about Wrigley, for all of its nuances, for all of the the idiosyncrasies that, that you can point at and look at here, it, more than anything else, Gracie, this is a park and not a stadium, and, and there is a difference, you know. Very true. The man who owned this team for 45 years insisted that Philip K. Wrigley didn't. He didn't just know gum. He knew uh, <laughs> knew the difference between beauty and, and boring. Oh, there's not a freeway near here. This is a neighborhood. I mean, this is not a this is not a big sports complex like you see in a lot of cities now. I mean this is just a, a good little neighborhood and next thing you know there's a, there's a ballpark. And there is a party every afternoon and or <laughs> evening too. That right. That's been a, a point of contention sometimes because 
Now the, the Cubs don't get money necessarily no. from, from out there. People that own those buildings do. They get a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Back to Garza. There's one. There's two. He is back under control and in control here against the Cardinals today. Leading 3-0 on Fox. Fusion Pro Glide turns shaving into gliding and skeptics into believers. Tough for a Cub fan to truly believe. This year they're 55 and 70. They fired the GM. But still 41,000 people here today to watch the Cardinals and the Cubs. On Fox, Josh Lewin, Mark Grace, happy to be with you. And you come from miles around to watch a, watch a Cubs Cardinals series, whether you're in Chicago or St. Louis. And you usually treated some pretty good baseball. Giovanni Soto wraps one into left field. That one is going to roll into the Ivy and get hung up in it. Putting up his hands like it's a touchdown is Alan Craig. Signifying, I got no clue where that baseball went, and he had to call this a double. That's exactly right. And the third base umpire, Scott Barry, a lot of times they'll go out there and check for themselves to see if it's playable or not. Fastball in, Soto just turns on it, rips it, and just one of the many quirks here at Wrigley Field. Uh oh, hey, whoa. And that's what you're told to do just throw your hands up, and it becomes a ground rule double. If indeed, Alan Craig had gone in after and started digging through the ivy. It's a live ball, and Giovanni Soto can keep running. So he did the right thing there and just threw up the arms, and it's a ground rule double. Matt Garza in a bunting situation. Remember, he bunted into a double play in the third inning. Well, the Cubs have four extra base hits during their last six trips to the plate now. All of a sudden. Just about every pitch that Edwin Jackson's throwing in the strike zone is getting hit hard. That is not a bunt. That is Garza almost pulling an oblique muscle. Well, Matt Garza hitting 065 coming into the ball game. And you can see oh, he swung man. hard, but that that ball was about six feet by him. So if I'm Matt Garza, go ahead and drop a bunt down, son. And don't get hurt. There <laughs> He's swearing you go. already. There you go. Perfect. Did you notice, though, after he almost fell to the ground on that swing, the first thing he did, it's like when you trip walking on the sidewalk, what do you do? You look down at the sidewalk like it's the sidewalk's fault. 
And then you look around to see if anybody saw right. you. I don't know if we have that or not, but he took that big swing, and his first reaction when his feet went out from under him is to just stare a dagger down at the dirt. Yeah, he looked down and then realized, yeah, about half the country just saw you, too. <laughs> but a great bunt there, helping himself, and he's going to get a dugout full of high fives. That's a that's a very tardy. Whoop! And then looked down, whoa, yeah. Stupid dirt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, go tell everybody about it. It's a pretty happy dugout down there. They're playing well today. Infield comes in right tight to the grass now with Castro up, runner at third, and just one out. No sign of a bunt quite yet. So the way Gars is pitching, what do you figure? Play here for just that one run and absolutely. Absolutely. Infield's brought in by the St. Louis Cardinals. So that adds 100 points to the hitter's batting average. So right now you're looking at a 409 hitter in Starlin Castro with that extra 100. And Castro now has 300 hits in the big leagues already. And he's closer to his 21st birthday than he is to his upcoming 22nd. Only a handful of players have gotten 300 hits at a younger age than Castro since his birth. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here they are Robin Yount, Adrian Beltre, Ken Griffey Jr. You know, you expect Griffey Jr. and Yount in there. Adrian Beltre. I would have never guessed him. Remember, he came up when he was 18, turning 19. You see, I would, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't have guessed that, but you're right. Looking back on it. One issue you can see here on your television, you got the shadows starting to play a little bit of a factor here, right? Yeah, exactly. And on these 3 o'clock starts, the... Uh, the word was in the clubhouse get your hits early boys because you're not going to be able to see anything from about the sixth inning on you can see those deep dark shadows starting to creep out near Edwin Jackson kind of a half and half right now of sunlight and shade on the way to the plate. With the infield in Schumacher makes the play. And the inning will be left to Darwin Barney. Crazy, this is for you. Uh -oh, Grammy Award nominated. LMFAO conducted an exclusive performance to a packed MLB fan cave presented by New Era Thursday as part of the MLB fan cave concert series. Party Rock Anthem, number one song in the country for the past six weeks. And fans were able to watch a performance on MLBFanCave.com and MLB.com. You can follow... On Twitter at MLB Fan Cave. Kind of looks like my pass list today. <laughs> you had somebody dancing around with a cardboard box on their head. <laughs> you know what? Never mind. That wouldn't surprise me. Tracy's still trying to figure out who Blink 182 is. Now we introduce him to LMFAO. No, I like Blink 182. <laughs> Haven't heard much out of him lately, but. One strike pitch to Barney up and outside. Again, Edwin Jackson first time through the order. It was very, very smooth. But the second time through on into a third time, it's been a struggle. Pitch, stops. pitch count starting to climb there for Edwin Jackson, but he's a he's a guy that can go into 130 pitches if he needs to. He has been. I think in his, if I remember correctly, his no hitter I think was up in the around 150. I think 149. That's wanting a no hitter right there when you go up near 150 in pitches. Unusual in this day and age, no hitter or not, for a starter to, to be left out there for more than 120. Anymore, you're right. The 
club's just put such an investment in these valuable right and left arms of these pitchers that I think they're just deathly afraid of a of a possibility of something like Adam Wainwright. You know, that's a, that's just been a crushing blow to these St. Louis Cardinals. What's well, remarkable with, with the Cardinals, and, and you're right, Wainwright, who had a 19 win season and a 20 win season, the Cardinals could have not a single 15 game winner this year, Mark. And it seems every year under Dave Duncan, they have at least one or two. And they've had difficulty with their bullpen this year. Pop fly heading towards that dugout. That's the thing with the wind blowing in. A lot of times those high pop ups will reach the seats. If the wind was blowing out there, that would have probably stayed in play. It's just another one of the things you have to think about here at Wrigley Field. Ryan Franklin struggled so much for the Cardinals in the closer spot. Tough to win ball games when having difficulty closing them early in the year. That's five straight fouls now by Barney. And you're right that the bullpen, coupled with the fact that the, the starters have not been doing what they're normally counted right. on to do, it's just been a very tough situation for Tony La Russa and for Duncan. And that's one thing Dave Duncan and Tony La Russa just mail it in they know the value of a bullpen because Tony Tony uses his bullpen as much or more than anybody in the game after all those fouls a line shot to right to end the inning three to nothing Chicago on Fox Today's game presented by Gillette is sponsored by Chevrolet. Proud to support youth baseball across the country and by Burger King. And the all-new BK Burger and Chicken Minis. One of the top cities in North America. No Chicago, question. Illinois. I don't need to twist your arm on that one, Mark Grace. You're not going to get any argument from nope. me. I have to see where you used to live. We drove right by yeah. there today on the way to the ballpark. That's the Chicago River there. Meanders through downtown. Edwin Jackson going to hit for himself. After an extra inning game yesterday, yesterday afternoon, the Cardinal bullpen a little bit taxed, so Edwin's going to hit for himself here. Not a bad hitter either, even, even though 
He's been in the American League most of the year. He's a good athlete. He can swing the bat a little bit. He will do so when Matt Garza is good and ready. <laughs> That's been one of our common denominators today. Garza just takes his time. What? Blustering fastball That's right worth, by Jackson. Worth the wait, huh? Dog on right. 9 1 2 in the order for the Cardinals here as we play in the top of the sixth with some sunshine. Cardinals might be kicking themselves a bit, Gracie, for not cashing in when they had Garza on the ropes in that first inning. Bases loaded, one out, and he was in a bit of a tantrum out there in the first inning. Some contact from Jackson. Well, he ate up Jackson with a fastball in. Going very hard as Garza. Well, and I do see that number 17. I see the G on the back of that jersey, <laughs> but then I see that that beard thing happening, and I don't recall you ever having that. No, I never, never could pull that off. Looks like something yeah. you literally could pull off. Well, yeah, it's it like like. <laughs> Yeah, it's strike three and guards is just cruising right now. All right, let's get you to Milwaukee and the Mets. This one in New York. Our direct TV game break. Some interesting facial hair working for Prince Fielder, too. And he also hit the heck out of that. Three run home run. Five to one Brewers. They're trying to win for the 21st time in 24 games. Get the most baseball games in HD. Call 1 800 direct TV. Topic of discussion. We've got Albert Pujols playing here this afternoon, Josh. Mm -hmm. We've just seen Prince Fielder. What's your take on the two free agent first baseman? Do you think uh, Albert's going to stay in St. Louis? Do you think Prince Fielder's going to stay in Milwaukee? It'll be tougher to pay Prince Fielder to stay in Milwaukee because of the restrictions, I guess you can say, financially in Milwaukee. Now, St. Louis isn't that much bigger of a market than Milwaukee. I was going to say, Milwaukee is the smallest market in all of baseball, but they also are drawing over 3 million fans every year. Well, and that's the thing, the thing with St. Louis, too. They are the, the number 20 market out of 30, mm -hmm. yet they have the number 10 payroll because they have maybe the number one fans. And they just keep coming and coming and coming, and that's their guy. They love their Albert Pujols. Not the Brewers fans don't adore their Prince Fielder, but with Milwaukee, you know, I guess what I'm looking at, Gracie, it's starting to remind me of Adrian Gonzalez last year. You kept hearing that the Padres would have to cut bait, so why not trade him now to get something right. back? But the Padres stayed in contention. He wasn't going anywhere. They had to keep him, exactly. Same thing here. You know, Brewers right now have a pretty large stranglehold on the Central Division. So obviously you can't trade Prince Fielder in that situation. You're trying at the end of the day, aren't you trying to win a World Series? So I, I just, I just honestly think that the money that these two guys command, Fielder and Pujols, the money they command, you know, it, there's only maybe five teams that can afford the kind of money they're going to command, wouldn't you say? And that is Yankees, Boston. It used to be Los Angeles Dodgers, not anymore. Not anymore. It used to be New York Mets, not anymore. Well, Angel fans would say, hey, a we're, we're in right. a big market. Angels, Philadelphia Phillies, they've got Ryan Howard. Uh, the Chicago Cubs, certainly. Garza can't get it. That is a base hit for a suddenly hot hitting John Jay. A couple of hits yesterday, a couple today. So, and. San Francisco Giants, I think, but you're also talking now. Okay. You're talking two first basemen. New York Yankees got a pretty good first baseman, Mark Teixeira, wouldn't you say? And he's not going anywhere. The Boston Red Sox, Adrian Gonzalez. So, you know, you, you throw those two throw, throw those two teams out. Yeah, the, the market shrinks just because exactly. of who can afford to pay and, and what's available. Uh, the San Francisco Giants have certainly could use a, a, a first baseman, but that's such a pitcher-friendly ballpark. If you're a slugging first baseman, are you wanting to go there? I mean, that's uh, that, that's kind of tough well, to go there and put up huge numbers. I think what's really interesting, the, the team that makes the most sense, they've got the money, you know they've got the money, even if they choose not to spend it all the time, is the Cubs. And that's whether, exactly it's, right. whether it's Prince Fielder or Albert Pujols, you are stealing from your rival. And if you're the Cardinals or the Brewers, do you make sure that you pay 
So it, you don't have to look at that. You've already paid a ton yeah, for Soriano. The Cubs have already paid a ton to Soriano for Ramos Ramirez. There's an affordable guy in Carlos Pena. He's a free agent. We talked about Milton Bradley earlier. Ooh. Kosuke Fukudome. Gave him a lot of money as well. Carlos Zambrano. And that one still needs to be decided if they do need to keep paying Carlos Zambrano. If he will ever come back to Chicago. They gave Zambrano that huge contract after he'd been an all star at age 23 and after he was routinely winning 15, 18 games a year. Craig a rip and a miss. So it's 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 when you when you kind of discuss it the way that we discussed it, there's just not many spots for these two guys to go because you know they can't go to the Kansas City Royals, they can't go to the Pittsburgh Pirates or places such as that. Seattle Mariners can certainly pay. But it's just uh, it, it, it's good fodder is what it is. But uh, I think I think it would be really good for baseball Josh if they stayed put. Well Prince Fielder's fodder if I may sure he actually won himself a World Series and, and Prince Fielder for example he hasn't come close to that yet. If the Brewers don't get there this year and there are some that are saying they might because they're, they're so tough at home they're exactly. hitting their stride right now. But you bring up Seattle would, would Prince Fielder want to go to a place where in his mind hey I'm part of a rebuilding thing. That's it. That's that's the point. So so it's a it's a very small list of places that these guys can go. So it just makes for good conversation because that was fouled back. And we're having this conversation because Craig's had like 17 I, foul balls. I was going right to say now. this is uh, this is a lengthy at bat and it gives us time to to talk with him and but it also gives Cub fans and Cardinal fans a little something to to think about as far as first base is concerned. One of those guys could be playing for you know wouldn't wouldn't it be something if uh, if because it's not a, it's not out of the question that Pujols could go to Milwaukee and Fielder and comes Fielder to goes to St. Louis. <laughs> I mean it's just it's not out of hand. Steve right three Garza wins that battle took a while but he got Alan Craig and had Craig reached Pujols would have batted as the tying man. It's kind of a big out right there. Fastball bell tied down the middle and right by Craig. Now here's the man that we're talking about the man that, that means so much to so many in St. Louis. I would suggest to you Mark that pool holes maybe combines the elements of power and grace. Maybe better than any other player in the sport. I just can't imagine this man wearing a, a uniform besides a St. Louis Cardinal uniform it just wouldn't make sense to me. Like I said for the good of the game I just think that this guy needs to stay in St. Louis. Now I'm sure a lot of Cub fans are saying, grace you're out of your mind. But he needs this guy needs to be in St. Louis just like Prince needs to be. In Milwaukee. But those are decisions for much more capable people than us, Josh. <laughs> Good breaking ball. That one buckled the knees out of the pool holes. You don't see that very often. Now, a little wrinkle on that one from Garza, and you're right, Pujols almost flinched. Watch the front knee of Albert Pujols. Yay! Outfield deep and around to left as two holes will take yeah. another one of those dialed down even lower 78. Yeah. That one may have even locked up the bowels of Albert Pujols. My goodness. Watch Albert again. Whoa. He gets buckled. Does he dare come back or is it with a, a third straight attempt at that or is this fastball time. I think he's going to come back with another breaking ball. Let's see if he does. Pujols gets the fastball and Pujols pops it up. Twelve straight scoreless innings by Cub pitching against the Cardinals.
Baseball presented by Gillette Fusion Pro Glide. The Cubs had a three run bottom of the fourth, and that has been standing up today. Aramis Ramirez had the big swing in that three run fourth inning. He leads off here in the bottom of the sixth. And this first pitch swing does not have a similar result. Pujols will take care of it. Ramirez hit the first one he saw in the fourth inning out for a two run shot. Folks, in two weeks, college football comes to FX. Charles Davis and Gus Johnson bringing you all the action beginning in Norman, Oklahoma. Number one, Oklahoma taking on upset minded interstate rival Tulsa, the Golden Hurricane. The FX Saturday college football game of the week presented by Russell Athletic in high def all season long on FX. Check local listings from the channel and start time in your area. And be sure to go to FoxSports.com. Check out Charles Davis's preseason power rankings. Who's your Who's your college team, Josh? Well, I'm very proudly a Northwestern alum. I'm ah. right here in Chicago, so I should have known that. I, I apologize for my ignorance. I say go Cats. Well, you're, they're going to love you here in Chicago. Yes, well, you are welcome anytime here. I guess. I just keep following you around, actually. Well, I, I figured you went to Northwestern just because you couldn't get into San Diego State. Is that's that, a, that's that precisely the reason, yep. And I call San Diego State the Harvard of the West. You are aware that San Diego is not a state, right? It's not? No. Oh. <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell, tell the regents out there. Ball and a strike the count to Pena from Northeastern, not Northwestern University. Boy, and this guy carries himself, as you know, Gracie, with a kind of a presidential air. He's humble. He's eloquent. One of the real good guys in the game. His dad, Felipe, was an electrical engineer in the Dominican Republic. And then when Carlos was a teenager, he moved the family to the States in search of a better life. And Carlos very quickly learned English. He enrolled to play baseball at Wright State in Dayton. But he transferred to Northeastern to be closer to, to where his parents were. Good fastball from Jackson. Boy, Jackson just had a about a five batter hiccup. And that was back in the fourth inning. I mean, other than that little lapse of concentration in those five batters, I mean, he's been brilliant today. Dominant. And during the course of his career, I think that's been the, the biggest. That's exactly right. Right, the biggest complaint about Edwin Jackson is there's just always that one inning yep, where he just kind of goes blank for about. Three, four, sometimes five batters, and the next thing you know, he's falling behind, and you're playing catch up. Sometimes it happens in the first inning. You strike three. I mean, he's just dominating. Other than those five batters, he has struck out Pena twice. But yeah, during that bad inning, Pena hit a triple. Fox Sports is proud to support Stand Up to Cancer and their work to fund groundbreaking research that helps accelerate treatment to patients. Stand up for someone you love. Visit standuptocancer.org backslash Fox Sports to learn more. Marlon Bird takes on the outside corner. Still wearing that protective part of the battering helmet. Yeah, well, just a, a violent beaning he took earlier in the year in Boston. Got hit right in the cheek. Marlon Bird, though, I think you'd agree, Gracie, the consummate pro, whether he's hitting 200 or 300. I agree. One, right? I agree. He's just a guy that comes to play and comes to win every day. I don't think Mike Quaddy's gotten this man. You, you can hit your wagon to this guy. He's a pro's pro. Bouncing out of here to end the sixth. It stays 3 0. The Cubs over the Cardinals will come back to Chicago after a word from your local Fox Station.
Cubs trying to get that World Series thing happening. Hey, I was 13 years of that. Thank you very much. Yeah, but you, it wasn't all your fault, though. Oh, thanks. Matt Garza today, just to, in the moment, the Cubs are doing very well. And he's been backed as well by a little bit of hitting. Aramis Ramirez had the big blow today, the two-run home run. Or just for men, keep your edge spotlight. Just as Aramis Ramirez gives the Cubs the edge. You too can keep your edge with just for men, mustache and beard. That was home run at number 24 for Aramis Ramirez. Came on the first pitch he saw in the fourth inning. Cub fans have certainly kept, for the most part, Gracie, a, a sense of humor about this very, very long stretch without a World Series victory. Well, oh, there's some good quotes. Do you have some? Well, I do, but it's almost almost rubbing it in. You know, I mean, they're well aware that it's been 102 yeah, going on 103. And I think it was Branch Rickey once said, there is an artistry to ineptitude. And he was not speaking of the Cubs, but some kind of point to that quote is saying that's that's about right. They've lost in some really inventive ways. Well, the great Joe Garagiola said the great things. The, the thing Cub fans they get their money's worth because when they go to a game, there's always a bottom of the ninth. <laughs> Maybe not today, though. The way Gars is pitching. 42,374 here today. So that biggest crowd that they had had since 1978, that lasted one day. Did it really? Yeah, we got that by about 30 people today. Or your, your uh, pass list. It's unbelievable. I mean, it is unbelievable. Good for these Cub fans. And, and my pass list. And some Cardinal fans today, yeah, too. That's right. There's, all, there's always some red as that was ripped into right field. And that's Berkman. Berkman's having a comeback player of the year year and the Cardinals trying to mount to come back here on the top of the seventh. Well on the inevitability scale if you will I mean the, the, the Cubs coming up short is easily a nine and a half if we're putting death and taxes at a, a ten. <laughs> Last World Series title yeah 1908. And the line I'll always remember came from Sports Illustrated back around the Steve Bartman era. They lose in ways to challenge the mind and numb the soul. That's pretty well said. Pretty poetic. Yeah. But for Cub fans, it's pretty tired, you know. They are ready to win. Rip and a miss by Freeze. You want to flash all the way back to 1908 just for the heck of it? You live in Arizona now. Arizona wasn't even a state yet in 1908. <laughs> Pretty amazing when you put it like that. Another yeah. strike from Garza. But the hot song of the day was Shine On Harvest Moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was a while good. ago. Marshall and Wood in the bullpen for the Cubs. Kerry Wood the right-hander, Marshall the left-hander. Political com columnist George Will. It says Cub fans are 90% scar tissue. <laughs> Freeze takes down and in. Can you can you tell I've heard them all? <laughs> I can tell. You're... Well, you played here for how many years? Thirteen years. Yeah. Thirteen fabulous years. Gracie, it wasn't all your fault. <laughs> Infield hangs a double play depth, and Freeze try to check his swing. He did. Says Wally Bell. Let's see what Wally Bell saw. That black bat got out there. Yeah, he checked it up. That's the right call by Wally Bell. We got a good crew here today. John Hirschbeck, the crew chief. Wally at first base. Laz Diaz doing a good job behind the plate. And young Scott Barry at third. Very good crew here this afternoon. Freeze is down on strikes again. Pitch number 100 for Garza. You throw 95 and then you drop this slider right there. Boy, freeze. I don't blame you for swinging and missing that one. That's just an education right there from Matt Garza. 
Getting close to the seventh inning stretch and another one of the great Cub traditions now. Of course, when Harry Carey passed away years ago, the baton was passed. They have celebrity singers. You're, you're not singing today, though, huh? Nope, not singing. Nope. I think I've done it three times. I'm telling you, what, it's one of the most nerve wracking things you can do is sing that seventh inning stretch because, well, you don't want to sound like Mike Ditka or Ozzy Osbourne. They set the bar low. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing I know for a fact is. Even though my voice is kind of like a Brillo pad, I know I did it better than them. If you're scoring at home, James Denton has the honors today from Desperate Housewives. Yeah. Big time baseball fan. Schumacher takes a strike. Not a lot to be singing and happy about for the, the Cardinal fans right now. But James Denton is uh, warming up in the bullpen. Got the pitch pipe ready. Cars are missing not by much. Soto trying to frame it. Now the Cardinals as we kind of fasten in on what's gone wrong for them. We talked about the pitching a little bit but that stat you just saw when they have opportunities with men on base they're not always cashing in. Try to get in the chase upstairs nothing doing two and one. Today the Cardinals with men on base Gracie are 0 for 6 and they've hit into a couple of double plays. Well, the none bigger than the first inning off the bat of David Freeze. That sent. Matt Garza on his merry way. I mean he has been in absolute control of this game. Since that meeting on the mound from Mike Quaddy in the first inning. That hit him or a foul ball. Now he got a piece of the bat. That would have been a big break for the Cardinals had that just nicked Skip Schumacher. Let's see. Yeah, that's the bat. And this ends up being a big at bat here because you've got Molina on deck. Molina parked a home run yesterday. He's having a pretty good power year. He would bat as the tying man exactly if, right. if Schumacher reaches. And even though the Cubs have been in by far up until the, up to this point the best team here this afternoon. Cardinals are just one more base runner away from like you said bring the tie and run to the plate. In on the hands and blooped in a center field a base hit. And Molina will bat is a tying man the Cub bullpen is ready. Yesterday second inning with a man on this is off of Randy Wells. Yeah, Molina with nine home runs. And after a conversation with Giovanni Soto, Matt Garza gonna toe the slab eventually. And now we got a big matchup. Now keep in mind the Cardinals did not start Matt Holiday today. They have that weapon available off the bench at some point. Right now it's Terrio on deck, and then the pitcher spot. And at the plate Molina who grounds it sharply to third. There's one there's two that's a whoa. That is not a double play the careless throw pulling Pena away. Well, Carlos Pena made a big mistake there. That's a play that Carlos Pena all he's got to do is just jump up. Make the grab and come back on the mound or come back on the bag. But instead he tried to go to the back of the bag and keep his foot. On the bag. Routine double play ball, you would think. Now it sails on Aramis Ramirez a little bit, but watch Payne. He goes to the back of the bag to make the play, and then he can't get his foot back on. That's just one if he stays on the bag, jumps up, makes the catch. And he's explaining that right now to Wally Bell at first base, and I think he understands the mistake he made there. He could have just come right back on the bag. Yadier Molina does not run well, so he would have certainly had time to come back down. Touch the bag and make the play. But Boy, now Terrio bats as a tying man with the former Cub Corey Patterson coming out on deck. An extra out now given to these St. Louis Cardinals. And even though that was an errant throw and maybe a, an errant decision by Pena, there's no error charge because you, you can't. You got an out. Right. You can't assume the double play. I've always wondered about that. I don't like that official scoring rule. Why can't you? These are major leaguers. 
These are the best players in the world. Why can't you assume a double play? Because that's the way it's been done forever. Terrio, the former Cub, with Patterson, another former Cub, on deck in a 3 0 game here in the seventh. Cub fans now getting behind Matt Garza. This place getting very loud. They're on their feet here at Wrigley Field. Bouncing away. Schumacher moves to third. And Molina's got to stay put at first. A wild pitch from Garza. Well, you called it. Everybody kind of amped up. You could feel it from the crowd, and maybe Garza a bit too amped up. Quite possibly. It skips away from Soto. That was on 0 and 2. 0 and yeah. 2 wild pitch. Yeah, Molina stays at first base, so base hits only going to score one run. Also keeps a fielder's choice as a possibility. Doesn't matter. Garza got him. By Direct TV now get Direct TV's best offer of the year, and by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. Three to nothing, the Cubs leading over the St. Louis Cardinals, and between innings, Matt Garza, boy, what a, a better mood he's in now, huh? Uh, Contrast that, that with the first inning. So impressive here this afternoon. He's kind of acting like he's out of the ball game. What do you think? He looks pretty relaxed yeah. right now. Yeah, usually, if you're still in the ball game, you're, you're still over there pretty focused and whatnot. I would imagine Mike Quaddy has let him know, job well done, my friend. Go ahead and take the rest of the afternoon off, and we're going to give somebody else the baseball in the eighth inning. Taking you back and trying to crawl inside the mind of Matt Garza okay. again, just to kind of reset that. Remember, this is a guy that has always had some some issues in terms of managing his emotions. He gets angry real quick. Not quite to the extent of a Carlos Zambrano obviously no. but. He had to to deal today with. Is this game going off on time or not? It's, it's pouring down sure. rain. Of course. Then the game starts. And the air show is going on. You got all this noise. You got a, a tight strike zone. He looked unhappy. He looked edgy. Yeah I, I agree with you. And then a, a call was made to intentionally walk Albert Pujols and 
He was not happy at all. He stared in at Mike Quaddy. He was he had, walked a couple of guys in the first inning, and that brought out Mike Quaddy. After Garth had been stomping around in the back mm -hmm. of the mound, firing down the rosin bag. Yeah, kind of like kind of like a a little kid that was just told he couldn't have another popsicle. Soriano bangs one over to third. Well, Garza got himself under control. It stays 3 0 in Chicago. And folks, on September 11th, the regular season of the NFL begins with a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First, you got the Falcons taking on the Bears right here in Chicago, where the Eagles battle the Rams, the Lions, and the Bucks. Then the Giants take on the Redskins in D.C., or you got Vikings, Chargers, Seahawks, Niners, Panthers, and Cardinals. Mark Grace's Arizona Cardinals. Get a little Cam Newton for your fine self. Coverage begins Sunday, September 11th with the Built for Tough Fox NFL pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Check local listings for the games in your area. Yeah, but those Cam Newton's going to get a heap of help in a Kevin Cobb. Okay, tough guy. <laughs> Looking forward to football starting though, aren't you? No, it should be a great season. Tyler Colvin belts one foul. Well, when we left off with football, you saw the Super Bowl, very entertaining Super Bowl mm -hmm. right here on Fox, Green Bay, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then, of course, we, uh, we had some angst in the middle. We weren't quite sure if we'd be getting going on time. But now we know, and everybody's pumped up. Colvin sails one towards center. And a rough season continues for Tyler Colvin. Jackson now through six and two thirds. And Chevrolet proudly supporting the great game of baseball at all levels. See how they're making kids' baseball dreams come true across the USA at ChevyBaseball.com. A strike to Giovanni Soto. Does he get some credit today? I mean, if we're going to talk about Garza settling down, Soto's the other half of that combination, yeah. right? And we heard Chris Carpenter earlier in the ball game talking about what a great advantage it is to have Yadier Molina behind the plate. And I think you're right. I think Giovanni Soto more than one time had to go out to the mound and calm the nerves of Matt Garza, bring him back to what he needs to do. And I think he's been terrific. He and Matt Garza together have just dominated this Cardinal offense. Sean Marshall is ready to pitch in place of Garza when we get to the eighth inning. That was just a few moments ago. Garza getting the congrats. Edwin Jackson saved for that bottom of the fourth inning, Grace. He's pitched a real nice game, too. He's still throwing 97 miles an hour. And he's one of the hardest throwers in the game. And like we talked about earlier, it was just a, a five batter span where he just kind of lost focus and lost what he was doing out there. Other than that, he'd been doing just that, dominating the Cubs. That one inning for the Cubs, where they scored three runs, has carried the afternoon so far.
Saturday baseball presented by Gillette Fusion ProGlide. Josh Lewin, Mark Grace with you at Wrigley. 42,000 plus here today to watch. Edwin Jackson is done after 97 pitches. Matt Gars is done after 110 pitches. Tony Campana gets into the game. Part of a double switch here. Sean Marshall takes over on the mound. You got a little guy in left, got a big guy on the mound. Although it's a little counterintuitive. Marshall is 6'7. You figure he's a flamethrower. He's not. He's really not. No, he's more of a off speed guy, a very big, hard curve ball, good changeup, and just enough fastball to keep you honest. He's had a good year. And Gracie, look who he's going to face. Matt Holiday will be the pinch hitter here. Are you, are you surprised they're using Holiday here? A little bit, because usually this would be the guy you want to bring off the bench with a couple of fellas on base and maybe try to tie up the ball game with a home run. Having a great year. But Tony LaRusse has decided, you know what? I need a base runner. I need a couple of base runners. He's going to start with Matt Holiday. But... Now, Holiday is three for seven lifetime against Marshall. And if they happen to get something going in this inning or next inning, he, he would be coming up in a big spot, right? I guess Tony decided he wanted to get him a, a look at a left-hander because if he uses him late, it's going to be against a right-hander. But like I said, Matt Holiday doesn't have a problem with right-handed pitchers. There's Edwin Jackson's day being done. A really good ball game by Edwin Jackson, wouldn't you say, Josh? Mm -hmm. Just that one, that one five batter span where he just kind of lost his focus, made a few bad pitches, gave up three runs. Other than that, he was he was awesome. Cardinals need the bats to wake up, though. They have just ten hits in two games here in Chicago. When Holiday is just not himself of late. He's been battling a bad back, but Tony LaRusso said right before the game, he's thinking might be a little bit in the head now, too. Exactly. Here's a big roundhouse curveball. This is the Sean Marshall special. You can see just how fooled and out in front Matt Holiday was. That's a quick strikeout of a really good hitter. A couple of hits for Jay today. He's been about the only guy hitting here at Wrigley Field, hadn't he? Yep. Jay was supposed to be the guy who would allow the Cardinals to deal Colby Rasmus without feeling much effect. Rasmus is a Blue Jay, and now John Jay gets a chance to, to play every day. And really, until the last couple of days here, just hadn't worked out very well yet. He flies to left. Rasmus has had a great first few weeks in Toronto. Edwin Jackson, you're right, Gracie, in that fourth inning, stumbled. And kind of been the M.O. for Edwin Jackson in his career. An extremely talented young man. Mike Quaddy's coming out to... Looks like take the baseball from Sean Marshall, who just easily got two outs. And yeah, I got some righties coming up now. And it's Kerry Wood time. We'll take a look at that after this on Fox.
Kerry Wood takes over with two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. Pours in a strike to Alan Craig. You've got Albert Pujols on deck. The Cardinals have not had a lot going on offensively in this series so far. Kerry Wood on his second pitch. He's going to get what appears to be the final out of this inning. He does. Cardinals running out of time. It stays 3-0 on Fox. Gillette is sponsored by AT&T, Rethink Possible, and by MasterCard, Eat, Drink, and Be Generous this summer. Cubs already leading 3-0 and trying to pad that lead here in the bottom of the eighth. The Cubs playing some good ball here in August. They're 12-5 this month. Matt Holiday stays in the game in left. And the Cardinals make a change on the mound. That's Mitchell Boggs wearing number 41. He has been in 41 games. We're going to show you another number 41 here in a second. It's the guy at the plate for the Chicago Cubs. And body type wise, the Cubs number 41 is a little different than the Cardinals 41. Yeah, one one is uh, one can fit in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Tony Campana, and he is he's a, a fast oh, baseball player. That much him. we know. They love him here at Wrigley Field. He's a He's a guy that puts a lot of pressure on opposing defense. Going to bunt and he's going to take off. And he is now informed that's a foul ball. He'll come back. He is barely 5'8. He is maybe 160 pounds. And he is, of all things, Mr. Grace, the son of a prominent football family or a football player. His dad played at Eastern Illinois under Mike Shanahan. His dad's brother played at Ohio State and later up in Canada. And Campana's grandpa is in the Ohio High School Hall of Fame as a football coach. But Boggs is a guy who looks like a football player. Yeah, Boggs is a big old Henry looking rascal. Hard throwing. Big old Georgia boy. And Campana, just a fresh faced youngster. I mean, he can run like a gazelle. When they're being chased. Yes. Bobby Dernier, there's another guy that had some speed. Down the line, that is foul. Yeah, 
And Campana's already got himself an inside the park home run. That's kind of fun. The only professional home run he's ever hit. And naturally it stayed in the park. How many of those do you have, by the way, inside the Parkers? None in the big leagues. I actually I actually had one in double A baseball. Did and you? I'll, I'll explain as the inning goes. Oh boy, he just got his clock cleaned by Mitchell Boggs, the big 41 picked on the little guy. Hear about your inside the park home run in just one moment. First, I got to tell you to get ready for TV's biggest night, the 63rd Primetime Emmy Awards, hosted by Jane Lynch. Be there for the laughter, the emotion, the surprises. The 63rd Primetime Emmy Awards, live Sunday, September 18th on Fox. All right, so where were you when you went inside the park? Well, it was in Double A baseball, and it was in Burlington, Vermont. Rifled into center field by Castro. And tell your story quickly. That's out number two. And I hit a kind of a flare down the left field line that got about halfway between the infield and the outfield wall. And the left fielder goes to the line. He dives for it. He comes up empty. He doesn't catch it. He separates his shoulder on the dive. So he just lays there and he can't move. He can't go get the ball. He, he's and because of that, I circled the ball just kind of trickled out. And by the time the center fielder got over to it, I was able to circle him because you know me, speed wasn't a big part of my game. I've heard that. So if a if a left fielder maims himself, I could circle <laughs> him. And that's my only my only one I ever had in my life. Do you ever get to third and, and want to go in the big leagues? Do you ever come close to, oh boy, maybe, maybe, or not really? No. <laughs> no. Not even. I didn't hit many stand up triples no. either, Josh. I'm aware. <laughs> Barney with a swing and a foul. 11 straight retired by Cardinal pitching. But again, they're undoing that three run bottom of the fourth. Now the Cardinals will have two holes to begin the inning when they bat in the ninth. That ball cranked in the center and it skips out there down in front of Jay. Had a ball take off on John Jay yesterday. It's not the easiest lawn to play all the time here, is it? No. Uh, with the wind wreaking havoc with balls and, and then it just Coy Hill just hit him a rocket and he misjudged it. He ended up turning a line out into a triple. That time he kept the ball in front of him nicely and kept Barwin, Barwin, Darwin Barney at first base. I kind of like Barwin Darney. Yeah, that would yeah. work too. Now, the the hero, if you will, of the ball game in this low scoring ball game, Aramis Ramirez with an opportunity. Well, and as of Memorial Day this year, Gracie, he looked like he was headed for the worst season he's had as a Cub. 46 games into the year. He had one home run. He had 17 runs batted in. The boy has taken off since then. Ninety seven miles an hour from Mitchell Boggs. But it misses. It's two and oh. We posed a question to Mike Quaddy before the game, and I, and I knew we'd get this answer. You, you want to know part of it, but I, I said if the Cubs go say 28 and 8 the rest of the way, do you fully expect to have a chance to come back? Because remember, there's a general manager change now. Sure. Everything's up in the air, and the look that he has right now is the look he gave us. He says I don't control it. Yeah, I don't. Exactly. I don't worry about it. I'm going to go out there and manage these guys to the best of my ability. I'm going to try to put them in situations to make them successful. And I'm not going to worry about anything I can't control. As you said, what box is throwing hard. He threw a fastball right by Ramos Ramirez to even the count. But we had a great conversation with Mike Quaddy. He's, he's an upbeat guy. The kind of guy you want to play for. It is a dream job for him. He grew up in Mount Prospect, not right. far from here. Big Cub fan. He come here to Wrigley with his dad all the time. 
And his teenage years, his formative baseball years, were not the Cubs' glory days. The Dave Kingman era was pretty much his domain. Right. That's the guy that managed for 17 years in the minors before getting his shot here in the big leagues. A lot of success in the minor leagues. And it's funny, the guy that's now the interim GM here, Randy Bush, was a teammate of his in college of all things at the University of New Orleans. But Bush knows that he's a, a short timer. quaddy has got to wonder if he's a short timer too. Bouncing up there, Molina could not contain that one. And it goes as a wild pitch. Well, when they invented the term wild pitch, <laughs> they're kind of talking about this one right here. Bounces in front of home plate. Got here, Molina has zero chance to corral that one. And just like that, now Darwin Barney is in scoring position. A base hit here would make it a non save situation, right? It would grow a 3 0 lead to a 4 0 lead. It's going to be two on and a chance for Pena. Now the back end of that cup bullpen has been a little dicey. And Carlos Marmol has not had a good year. Well, I like to call him the, the most exciting player in baseball, Carlos Marmol. He's not afraid to, to make it interesting. When he's right, I mean, he, he strikes out the side like it's easy to do. When he's not, he gets wild and things can get a little haywire. Well, they can get a lot haywire. Uh, two on here for Pena, one time first round draft pick. That of the Texas Rangers. Then they started getting passed around in Oakland. He attempted to take over for the popular Jason Giambi. Giambi initially took over for the even more popular Mark McGuire, who, of course, is in this ballpark today, the Cardinals hitting coach. Not liking what he's seen so far from today from his hitters. Pena rips that one, but foul. Well, the, you know, the Cardinals have the, the highest batting average in the National League. But you'd never know it with what's happened here these couple of days in Chicago. There's a lot of good hitters and a lot of guys that swear by Mr. Mark McGuire as far as a hitting coach. A lot of great hitters don't make great hitting coaches. Mark McGuire is not one of those. He teaches. He's a, he's a student of hitting. That ball popped to the left side. They better start teaching in a hurry. The Cardinals <laughs> have three outs left, and they need three to tie here at Wrigley.
Cardinals here at Wrigley, three nothing Cubs. So they rallied for a win to the Cubs yesterday. Now here's Carlos Marmol trying to save it, facing Albert Pujols and delivering strike one. And with Carlos Marmol, you're going to see body parts flying everywhere. One of the best sliders in the game, maybe if ever. He went with the fastball there. He challenged Albert Pujols right down the middle and he jumps ahead 0 and 2. Eight blown saves this year for Marmol. He's lost some velocity this year. That fastball's been down. That slider is still a wipeout pitch. You're right when he's throwing it well. Pujols checking his swing. Just such a violent delivery from Marmol. And these are the matchups you pay to watch. This is why you come to the ballpark. The closer for the Cubs with great stuff. Albert Pujols. Marmol wins out. Pujols, who got his 2,000th career hit off Marmol just about a month ago. This time rolls to short. A quiet day for the great Albert Pujols. 0 for 3 with a walk. That walk was in the first inning, which looked like would be a big inning for the Cardinals because Berkman followed with a walk as well. It was bases loaded, one out. And they had Matt Garza on the ropes, didn't they? I, I thought Matt Garza had himself on the ropes. Yeah. He just looked so unnerved by everything that was going on, but... He settled down. He got freeze to chop into that 6-4-3 double play, and then everything was fine. He was terrific after that, no question. Seven innings. Of shutout baseball, and now Carlos Marmol. Two outs away from just an absolute gem from the Cubs pitching staff. That'll be locked up in left field. Milwaukee, by the way. Still winning in New York, but only by a run. It's seven to six there. And the Cardinals trying to hang in that race. Give you an update. That game just got tied, we're told. Seven seven. So a little shred of good news for St. Louis fans. They're in the bottom of the eighth. And these Cub fans have risen to their feet. Anticipating oh, a victory. That they love more than any other a victory over the St. Louis Cardinals. That'll be two straight against the Cardinals. Freeze is buckled back. And you saw Soto. His, stay down. Stay down. Yeah, sometimes pitchers like to just introduce themselves to you. That really wasn't that close. And that sets up that beautiful slide. That's just a, that's how you do it right there. That's just pitching 101. Throw the fastball up and in, and then bring the slider back and buckle the knees of the batter. Only five hits for the Cardinals today, same as they had yesterday. Inside. Schumacher on deck. Got him. Ball game. The Cubs have shut out the Cardinals today. One inning. It was all they needed. They got the three runs in the bottom of the fourth. Ramirez hit the home run. Two scored on that one swing. And Garza with minimal run support. Of course, it's been that way all year for him. Three was plenty. The Cubs have won it three to nothing. We'll come back to Chicago after a word from your local Fox Nation.